That's me. That's literally me as Vasta Stampede from Trigun. This was taken at SakuraCon in the year 2000. How are you feeling? You got John Riggs, of course. I'm a huge retro gamer, and I'm also a huge retro anime fan. Fanatic, even. I love my breakfast cereal, my video games, my anime, and my pro wrestling, all retro. Now, this was taken, and I will, you know, all of these were taken at the uh, at SakuraCon in the year 2000. It was year one for SakuraCon, but the third year for the anime convention in Seattle. You see, before that, it was called BakaCon, and they called it BakaCon for two years until I think they realized we're never going to get a gift from Japan. If we just call it BakaCon. So they had a poll, and then I remember AmeCon was one of them, Ame for rain, and SakuraCon stuck, and you know, it works out pretty well. I want to say this used to be like in April as well, so it was during the time of like the Sakura, you know, like the cherry blossoms and all that. So my friend Dan took these pictures, had them developed, he's just been sitting on them for the last, what, 23 years now, I guess. It's funny because I was 23 years old in this picture. As long as my friend has had these pictures is how long it took me to grow up to this level. <laughs> And it was the first time I cosplayed in public. I made the coat myself and everything. You know, here I am with the uh, Kitty N girls, and you'll see them later on as well. That's my real hair. Um, I made the coat. I believe it was taffeta for the material because it hangs heavy, but it flows like silk. So I had that kind of leathery but flowy material. And, you know, more recently, i you know, doing the Dr. Robotnik thing for my cosplay. And Dr. Robotnik's always fun because, you know, I kind of fit the part and fit the build. So it works out all right for me. You know, even just like the Halloween costume for like Wreck-It Ralph. I mean, I'll do anything, including low budget like this uh, Kratos using a fruit by the foot for the red stripe. This generic ninja, which is really just a shirt inside out over my face and a pair of jeans for my shoulder uh, tassels there. And well, I mean, I found this picture. I thought I'd share it with you anyway. This is me as a gremlin. I think this was probably, when did Gremlins come out? 1984? Something like that? But I loved anime so much. I even had like, you know, tried to get myself anime hair at the time. Here's me looking awesome wearing my Fudingkan High t-shirt, you know, from Ranma. Oh my god, and I want to share this picture with you as well. My literal bedroom. Look at those pictures on the wall. I, I got those for like five bucks each at some random bootleg shop in Seattle. This is back in the day. But just for fun, I'm going to share with you most of the photos, because some of the photos didn't quite turn out right. I did scan them. If you want to download these pictures for yourself, if you need to grab any of them for yourself, I scanned them and I put them on my Facebook page, uh, which is open to the public. I have that linked in the description below, and the pictures you're going to see in this video are the same pictures that I just I, that I just uploaded. So make sure you check that out too, if you'd like. <sighs> A little walk down memory lane. Now, I don't know who Nicholas Wolfwood was, but I happen to have dressed like Vasta Stampede, and someone else happened to have dressed like Nicholas Wolfwood. Perfect! So, we kind of hung out a little bit for photos together, but I didn't know him at the time, and we just kind of, you know, just by nature of, hey, we're in the same show, let's, you know, hang out. Another great photo of me with my awesome hair, back when I had hair. Uh, the the uh, gauntlets there, they're just isotoners, and then I whipped up a leather strap, so you can see the colors don't even match, but at the time, cosplay was just, hey, you're just having fun. You're not, you know, you're not looking for Hollywood quality style props or anything like that. You're just doing the best you can with the materials you have. I did sew this coat myself. Believe it or not, I have some decent sewing skills. I'd make a great drag queen. <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe that'll be another thing in the future. And let's check out some of the other cosplays too, like uh, from Final Fantasy. Is it eight? I believe. Look at this. That's cool. And then I'll just kind of like go through and you'll you'll recognize some of the characters and the cosplayers and everything too. Like, you know, the Kitty Inns and everything. Uh, they were Kitty Inn one day and then the next day they were both Nurse Joy, which I thought was kind of fun. And I believe they're, they're still out cosplaying and stuff like that too. And here's a, this is a fun group of people. I remember them. They, they represented their local anime club at their college. I think it was in Bellevue, I think they said. Uh, I recognize uh, Lime there from Saber Marionette J. A, a huge Saber Marionette J fan. So you kind of have, you know, the cast there. I think the other ones are from Bakunetsu Hunter maybe? Again, we just had disposable cameras. That's all we were using. We didn't have digital photography. So even things like here's the, you know, the, here's the cosplay contest. I did not win, by the way. I didn't. And I didn't need to. But uh, the Adelaide's for me, or the accolades for me, I should say. Adelaide's, what? Um, were people afterwards saying, oh, man, you should have won. Oh, man, you should have won. And you know what? That's good enough for me. I don't, I don't need to win to know that I'm going to have a good time. I knew I had a good time. But yeah, just, I mean, that's what I loved about cosplay in the late 90s to early 2000s was we were just doing the best we could with what materials we had. And you know what? Close enough is good enough. And if you figure out what we are and you know who we're supposed to be, that worked out great. Now, this is the first year I cosplayed. The other two years I attended... Uh, Bakacon, or you know, it was yeah, it was Bakacon at the time. You get that kind of ha uh, Halloween, mo uh, you get that kind of Halloween FOMO, where you see other people. Ha you're just like, I'm not gonna dress up for Halloween, but then you go to a party and everyone else is dressed up. You're like, ah, you know what? I could have at least wore something. And so the first year, not so much. The second year, I was like, ah, I should do something. So that's what I started planning for the third year being, uh, you know, when, when Bash the Stampede or when uh, Trigun came out, it was like my favorite anime at the time. My friend sure took a whole lot of photos of Tiffany Grant, but you know. 
<laughs> I ain't gonna blame him. Tora from Ushio and Tora. This is actually literally my sister, Dorothy. Not that I needed to her, not that I really needed to help her, but the outfit itself, it was an orange long sleeve t-shirt and then the black stripes was literally cut up black socks that we just put over the uh, arms and then stitched it together. It, it, it made it for a great look, you know, quick and easy. And again, Saber Marionette J. It was one of my favorite shows at the time. So, so happy to see uh, these characters from the show. Saber Marionette J. I wonder if they have that on DVD. I gotta find it. One of my favorite photos of this whole thing, it doesn't even include me, it's this one here, because it was at the Doubletree Inn in Tequila, Washington. It wasn't at the convention center. It wasn't at, you know, SeaTac or anything like that. The Doubletree Inn in Tequila, Washington. We took over the whole lobby of the hotel, basically. So this dude checking in, he doesn't have a clue what's going on. He's like, why, what's... <laughs> I love that. What are these up to now? Oh, I just love, I mean, this the retro cosplay, it doesn't get any better than this. And you can't compete with what they have now because they have like Hollywood prop makers making cosplay now. And props to them, no pun intended. Uh, shout out to them because I mean, they're doing things like full suits of armor. I wish we could have done something like that, you know, in these days. Uh, you'd win for sure. But, you know, again, just using what you have and just you're just having fun. It is that old, that old school, just innocent simple i mean you had to want to be here it wasn't the trendy thing going to an anime convention in the late 90s again this is 2000 so i'd consider that as well going to an anime convention during this time was not a trendy thing to do you had to want to be here you couldn't just show up and be oh here's where all the people are yeah i, I guess i watched dragon ball z oh have you watched chainsaw man no nothing like that it was just people who knew knew and some people cosplayed from manga because the anime wasn't even out yet. Oh, there was the dance. Um, the dances are fun. I mostly just went. I mean, I'm not much of a dancer. I'll be honest with you. I'm not there to dance. Um, did a little bit. I mean, we all my, my we all my friend Dan and I had some fun. Uh, but when in doubt, I mean, I, we would go just to listen to like anime opening and closing songs. You know, with, with full you know st sound system and everything. Uh, inevitable that there will always be a conga line. I don't think that's ever changed. But you're gonna have fun with that one all the same too. And uh, here's that here's that girl from uh, from Final Fantasy again. You know, just a little little sneaky poo around the corner, right behind my back there. Tristan McAvery here. Uh, he was uh, he was one of the guests this year. Super nice guy. Now this here is Chris, and I remember Chris specifically. He was so nice and so cool to everyone. Just fun to hang out with. And from what I understand, he's still doing this today, and I haven't spoke to him in probably 23 years. Um, but, you know, I need to find my way to an anime convention again, and, uh, you know, I'll be like, hey! I mean, he doesn't remember me, I promise you that. But he was just fun to hang out with. They had, they had, they had a taiko drum thing. That was what's cool about the anime conventions of the time, uh, was it was, you know, not... Yeah, there's panelists, and like, hey, well, I was the voice actor for this, or I do, you know, drew this, or, you know, um, they would have just a taste of Japan. Some of the panels were like taiko drums. Some of the panels were, hey, I went to Japan and here's what it's actually like. Yes, the cicadas are that loud, stuff like that. Um, you know, Anto uh, Dr. Antonia Levy, Dr. Antonia Levy, she uh, she wrote a book uh, about this and, uh, and bought the book and it's a wonderful, wonderful book, wonderful read. Still is today. Again, just some random pictures, but if you need any of them, check out my Facebook page. It's linked in the description. And thank you for just a quick walk down memory lane of just, you know, old school anime convention. And, um, you know, it's hard. It, we'll never experience that again. You know, if you go to an anime convention now for the first time, it's overwhelming. Uh, but man, these days, it, it's just, it's, I don't know. It's, it's hard, hard, to, hard to put into words. So I won't say anything. I'll just stare blankly at the camera. How's that?